Penn State missed out on not one, but two wide receiver targets out of the transfer portal. But after a cryptic social media post, it seems like Penn State is very close to landing a wide receiver out of the portal after all. You are Locked On Nittany Lions, your daily podcast on the Penn State Nittany Lions. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is going on, Penn State fans? That is right. You are locked on at Nittany Lions. Thanks so much for making us your first listen and watch every single day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast. part of the Locked On Podcast Network. I am your host, Zach Seiko. Thanks so much for checking out the latest episode here as we're talking transfer portal wide receivers. What are the two starting cornerbacks doing for the bowl game and their futures? And Tyler Warren is set to come back. Merry Christmas to all of you, especially those who celebrate. I appreciate you, uh, each and every one of you, especially since we have helped grow this channel on YouTube, over 2,500 subscribers. If you're not an everydayer already, become one, subscribe to Locked on Nittany Lions on YouTube and wherever you get your podcast. I really appreciate it. I am so grateful this holiday season for each and every one of you. If you want the latest and greatest when it comes to Penn State football analysis, you subscribe to Locked on Nittany Lions here on YouTube and wherever you listen to your podcasts. Penn State has missed on two more transfer portal targets at the wide receiver spot, but a cryptic social media post says that they're very close to landing one of their prime targets as well. So, yes, you have some bad news, but you have the good news with it as well. At least that's the way that it's shaping up, but let's discuss. So, Colby Young and Andre Green are off to other destinations. Colby Young was the player out of Miami of Florida that was being recruited by Penn State, took an official visit. It seemed like things were going well. Young actually played a little bit of football at Lackawanna Community College, and we know that there's the pipeline there, that a lot of prospects from Lackawanna do end up coming, more so often than not, right? Not too many, but a good amount have come over to Quan Brisker. Right. And don't forget about Jair Brown, just to name a couple, have come over from Lackawanna and done well at Penn State. And it seems like Colby Young might have been the next one to be a part of that connection that works out in Happy Valley. However, he's committed to Georgia. He's committed to the Bulldogs, ends up going there. And that one, that one's a hit for Penn State. That one is not is not a good look for transfer portal recruiting. Wide receiver spot, Marcus Haggins was supposed to fix some of these issues, and it feels like Penn State is still lagging behind. With the Hurricanes last season, 47 receptions, 563 yards, five touchdowns on a team that just struggled at quarterback, struggled in the passing game, and was still able to make the most out of it there. Andre Green. Wide receiver at North Carolina entered the transfer portal, is going to commit and sign with the Virginia Cavaliers. This one makes a little more sense, and I don't think Penn State should be as hurt over. Colby Young had a little more pedigree to him, right? With Andre Green, it still feels like a little bit of a development project, even though you're getting a power four wide receiver, right? I started with that power four. I don't have to correct myself this time. But Andre Green, being a Division I wide receiver, power four, is still lacking with the way that he has developed. Two catches, 17 yards in a passing offense that is supposed to be more so prolific at North Carolina. You had Sam Howell, but he didn't play with Sam Howell. He played with Drake May. Drake May is supposed to be a top five NFL draft pick, probably the first or second quarterback taken in 2024, and just never really found his footing with the Tar Heels is end up is going to go back to Virginia, the state that he is from and play for the Cavaliers. So he's returning home. So that's why he probably picked Virginia UVA over happy Valley. Now my preference, if you had to pick one of the two, I would have taken Colby young over Andre green. It would have been nice to have gotten either one of them, maybe both, but young had more experience, better stats, right? He had better stats. He performed better against better competition too. both of them coming from the ACC. So you have, if you're able to compare them, right, who's done better. And you have the, you have the comparable talent that they went up against. It's not, you know, the group five versus the power four, uh, one conference as opposed to another, they're coming from the same conference and similar types of programs that are somewhat successful, but clearly not over the top here with, with young in the case of young, he struggled, he thrived 
in a struggling Miami offense. And I think that is key. He could have been an immediate number one for Penn State. In the case of Andre Green, probably would have taken some time to develop. Still, I guess, on the younger side and really doesn't have much to show for it. So he probably would have been someone that would have gotten better over his time at Penn State, but not an immediate day one impact type of player. That is what Colby Young would have been. So what what burns me about Green, though, okay? Yes, I had a preference to take Colby Young as opposed to Green if you were going to get either of them. But yes, he chose Virginia. That's his home state. And I get it. He He's from that area. But Marcus Higgins, coach there, he's from Virginia. And wasn't he supposed to fix some of these things? Wasn't he supposed to be the key, the gateway to Virginia? to get some of those high-profile prospects to Penn State. And after all, it's it's UVA. It's not like he's going to Virginia Tech. The Cavaliers were 3-9 and overall in 2023, and we make fun of Penn State's offense and, and the passing attack, and it seems like the Cavaliers had no footing in the aerial attack whatsoever, if I can even call it that, an, an aerial game plan of, of some sort. But... Okay, that's the bad news. They missed out on two, and especially and especially in the case of Colby Young, they missed on someone who was a day one, wide receiver one type of player, at least it could have been in Penn State's offense. It, to, to make sense of losing Young, there's probably the case that he liked being around Georgia. Athens, Georgia might have felt better, felt more like home to him than Happy Valley State College, Pennsylvania. You have to consider these types of things. He just spent... A, a season at Miami of Florida, and and then he's going to come up north, and, and yes, return to you know right. He's in a similar setting in the same region as Lackawanna, but still, going from Miami to Georgia kind of makes sense in this case. How about the cryptic social media post though, in the in Julian Fleming? How about the cryptic social media post though? As we shift gears, okay, so that's the past. Young's going to Georgia. Green's going home to Virginia. But Julian Fleming was on Instagram and shared a post of him purchasing a truck from a very particular car dealership, Blaze Alexander. Some of you might be familiar with Blaze Alexander. Others might not be. Blaze Alexander is a car dealership in Pennsylvania, based out of Pennsylvania. And they are also a corporate sponsor of Penn State football. Interesting. Interesting. Now, Pat Cordler, who's been a guest on this show, did a little bit of detective work, Black Shoe Diaries contributor, and brought this to everyone's attention and it went viral. But you notice the sticker on the back of the truck, and it's a Blaze Alexander sticker. You start to piece some things together. Maybe we're getting a little bit of a conspiracy theory here, but why, why are you buying a car? Why are you buying a vehicle from one of the most well-recognized in the state of Pennsylvania car dealerships and someone who is strongly affiliated with its Penn State sponsorship. I find that interesting. But Julian Fleming hasn't announced his commitment to anywhere, right? So what are we waiting for? Because all the predictions pointed to Fleming, and it's been quite some time. It's been over a week. It feels like that. It feels longer than that in the transfer portal world. Some things move very quickly. But is this a case like Malik McLean? from last season where maybe Fleming is going to quietly commit, silently commit, and then enroll, and then news will just happen to be reported rather than a big post and a big celebration like that. Because remember, Malik McClain did that last year. He did that in the last transfer portal cycle where he just silently committed to Penn State and then was all of a sudden in the active, in the active student base. He didn't, and he didn't announce that he was committed or anything like that, but McLean did that last season, so maybe there's a chance that Julian Fleming does exactly that, or he's just still taking his time, his due diligence, but remember, he also is from Pennsylvania, so he's probably home now for the holidays and spending time with his family. It might make sense since Blaze Alexander is based out of Pennsylvania that he is just buying a car from a hometown dealership, if you will, but just... Put some pieces to the puzzle and you you have Julian Fleming almost all but committed to Penn State. Maybe, maybe not. But I think this is I think this is a good sign if I had to if I had to believe this. It it looks like a good sign more than a negative one.
right? Now, are there good signs pointing towards Johnny Dixon and Kalen King playing in the Peach Bowl, one of them returning for 2024? We're going to discuss that in just a moment here on Locked On, Nittany Lions. And today's episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings, it's what brings home the winning trophy. It's also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to its peak performance. From superchargers and roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style eBay Motors has got you covered. And with over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you are looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay Guaranteed Fit is only available to U.S. customers. And the Locked On Podcast Network is making history. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. Locked On Sports Today is here for you. 24-7 covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows covering each and every league. Go to Locked On Sports Today on YouTube and subscribe to the first ever National Sports 24-7 streaming channel. Kalen King, Johnny Dixon, are they playing in the Peach Bowl or are they opting out? Johnny Dixon, out of eligibility, but could Kalen King return? It's very interesting here. We know that Dixon has to leave, and I, and I, I stand corrected with what I have said in the past. I have said that Johnny Dixon had the option, but he is, in fact, out of eligibility. He used his COVID year this season and does have to go into the NFL draft. We know that he accepted the invite to the Senior Bowl, so that almost made it very clear that he wasn't going to come back. But we still don't have an official indication that he's playing or not playing in the Peach Bowl. Actually, only one, technically only one Penn State player has opted out of the Peach Bowl. Olu Fashion, who made his announcement that he is going to declare for the 2024 NFL draft. And Olu, it's about time. I think everybody and their brother knew that this one was coming. But Olu Fashion, who didn't say one way or the other that he was going to play or not play in the Peach Bowl. We know that he's traveling with the team and said he's spending, you know, he's excited to spend one last time with his team, with James Franklin, going down to Atlanta, Georgia. But he technically did not opt out. The only player is Chop Robinson. That's the only person that has opted out of the Peach Bowl. And that's understandable. Olu Fashionu making this decision was uh, would have been understandable as well, but still hasn't made one. And even though there were rumors, even though there were indications that Johnny Dixon was leaning towards opting out of the Peach Bowl, he still hasn't done it. He still hasn't made any indication if he's going to opt out or not. But what about Kalen King? It, it's kind of getting late to this point, right? Merry Christmas, everyone. It's it's Christmas going on going on now at the time whenever you're watching or listening back to this episode. But we're very close. It's game week. It is game week. December 30th, Saturday. That Penn State's playing <laughs> Ole Miss. You got a game this week. And I understand traveling with the team, but are, are you going to go through practices and walkthroughs just to say, you know what, a couple of days, 48 hours in advance that you're not playing? I feel like You're going to have all three of your starting cornerbacks against Ole Miss, which is a very good thing because this is a passing attack attack that has three veteran options for Jackson Dart, the quarterback, to go to. So what about Kalen King? Preseason, he was a top 15 projected NFL draft pick, but definitely had an off year, definitely took a step back, went from that number two cornerback to that number one cornerback spot and didn't hold his own as well as a Joey Porter Jr. did. That was supposed to be the comparison, but as we can see, Joey Porter Jr. was a lot further ahead than Kalen King in their similar timelines, right, where they were at their respective spots. But I would probably say that Kalen King doesn't fall out of into day three He's not a fifth, sixth, or seventh round prospect. He still has a lot of potential, but I think his draft stock has definitely taken a hit. Second or third round pick in my mind. But is King okay with that? Is Kalen King okay with moving out of the first round and being one of the first corners taken to possibly 
a day two. And maybe NFL scouts are saying something different. Maybe they view him now as a fourth round pick or a fifth round. Look at someone like Akili Ringo, a Georgia cornerback who was selected by the Philadelphia Eagles, but went certainly a lot later than a lot of people were projecting him to with NIL and a chance to almost reboost his draft spot again. Is there a chance that he comes back to Penn State? I've posed this question for a little bit now. I was convinced that Kalen King would opt out of the Peach Bowl and go into the NFL draft, but with the age of college football and Penn State certainly needs him. And we've noticed that James Franklin, other than the, the surefire first round picks, because Penn State tells you to go into the draft, they have been very good at re-recruiting those players to return. Brenton Strange to get him to come back. And I'm going to talk about Tyler Warren in the final segment. But yes, we know about Tyler Warren now. And then Theo Johnson, right? A lot of the, they had to re-recruit Johnny Dixon to come back last season. Could this be a similar situation with Kalen King? Let's throw something else into the mix here. Kalen King has twin brother Kobe King, who hasn't shown any signs of opting out of the Peach Bowl or going into the 2024 NFL draft. Is there a chance that because these two are so closely connected, I mean, after all, they're twin brothers, do they want to leave together rather than going apart? And I could absolutely see that. Both of them entering the draft at the same time, especially with now, you can still make a good amount of money in college with NIL. The reason a lot of players went into the draft earlier than anticipated was because, yes, you got an NFL paycheck. No matter where you were drafted, you were making hundreds of thousands of dollars. Sure, first-round picks can make millions, but in this case, you were getting more than what you were making in college football, at least what, what was supposed to be the situation, right? If you were getting paid in college football before this era, hmm, besides the point, I could see an instance where Kalen King steps back and says, you know what? Kobe's going to stick around for another season. Maybe I should as well and reprove myself that I am a top cornerback and I should be selected in the first round and there should not be any doubts by NFL scouts. I shouldn't be considered a day two or a day three pick as a possible. Again, I see him as a second or third round pick, but as the, the scouts, what are the conversations that the NFL scouts are having? Do they see him as a fourth or a fifth round pick? I'm not sure. We can all agree that he certainly took a step back and did not perform as well up to the expectations that were there for him preseason. He did not perform like a first-round cornerback. So a season back at Penn State would help him. It would certainly help Penn State a lot. But as far as the Peach Bowl goes, it seems like a decision is getting, it's getting too close to the end here. I have a feeling that he's certainly playing in the Peach Bowl. Same thing with Johnny Dixon. Neither of them have opted out to this point. But we know that Dixon has to go to the NFL. Now, that's been made clear to me. In the case of Kalen King, it's still unclear. But there are reasons bringing him back to Happy Valley as opposed to him going into the NFL. I think the reasons coming back to Penn State are now greater than him going into the NFL. Someone who is guaranteed to return to Penn State football in 2024. That's Tyler Warren, tight end. Theo Johnson's going into the draft. Warren's going to come back for one more season. What does that mean for the team going forward? We'll discuss in just a moment. If you're not already, become an everydayer. Subscribe to Locked On Nittany Lions on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Thank you so much. I am grateful this holiday season. So grateful for 2,500 plus subscribers on the YouTube channel. This show would not be what it is without you. And if you're not an everydayer already, subscribe to the channel wherever you get your podcast for the latest analysis with all the Penn State football news when it comes to recruiting, transfer portal, game recaps, roster moves, so much more, and men's basketball, men's hockey, and wrestling on the way as well with all that coverage here on Locked On Nittany Lions. Tyler Warren is set to play in the Peach Bowl and to also return to Penn State football in 2024. Obviously, this is great news. You get a veteran player. You get tight end number one back. Okay, Theo Johnson going into the 2024 NFL draft. Tyler Warren becomes the clear cut tight end number one. And then you have Khalil Dinkins, Andrew Raplia, Jerry Cross for the moment. Who, who knows what changes after spring ball and everything, just because he is a lo little lower on the depth chart, but he is a veteran. And then you get the five-star tight end 
in Luke Reynolds joining the program early, right? He's enrolling in the spring semester and he's going to be ready to go as well. So this tight end room is still, I don't think it's going to miss anything of a beat because Tyler Warren gets better. Khalil Dinkins is going to take a step forward. Andrew Rapley is supposed to be that next tight end in waiting. He's supposed to be, if everything goes right, maybe jump ahead of a Khalil Dinkins. But we've seen some potential with the way that Dinkins has played. I'm not going to oversell Andrew Rapplier and what he's been doing. But Khalil Dinkins has silently, you know, continued to work. He's been the winner workout warrior a lot of the times. And I expect that again as well. But I don't see this as an instance where it was Brenton Strange, Theo Johnson, Tyler Warren. And it seemed like uh, until Brenton Strange really pushed the bar up and, and set those expectations and moved away from the pack and was that clear cut tight end number one. There's not going to be any of that confusion. Tyler Warren and Theo Johnson coming in were a dynamic duo. You didn't know who was tight end 1A or 1B on a given Saturday. You kind of had to pick your poison and they did things differently that helped complement each other in the offense. But this time around, new offensive coordinator, we might see some more three wide receiver sets if Penn State is able to land a Julian Fleming or get more out of their wide receivers. Khalil, I'm not saying Khalil Dinkins can't do it and that they can't run 12 personnel, but I think we're going to go away from an even split of usage of tight ends. You have a clear cut veteran, Tyler Warren, who's been doing it for quite some time. He's seen action now in 2021, 2022, and 2023 and is going to be returning for a 2024 season. CBS Sports has described him as the best-kept secret in college football going into this season. I don't know that he maybe lived up to those expectations, but Tyler Warren did put a solid season together in 2023 and can build off of that into 2024 and set himself up nicely for the 2025 NFL Draft. As we've seen that, right? Brenton Strange came back, became a second-round pick by the Jacksonville Jaguars. Theo Johnson is probably going to be one of the first tight ends taken in 2024's NFL draft. Tyler Warren doesn't have to share as much of the usage, as much of the workload with these other tight ends. There is a gap. He was close to Theo Johnson and Brenton Strange, but now he's further apart from what Khalil Dinkins, Andrew Rapplier, Jerry Cross, or hopefully Luke Reynolds can provide an instant impact. And maybe you don't even need to redshirt him if all goes well over winter workouts, spring ball, et cetera. That's my point, is Tyler Warren is tight end number one, and there's no sharing it. Khalil Dinkins is, for right now, the clear-cut tight end number two. Andrew Rapplier, from what we've seen in glimpses at practice, from what we've kind of been hearing, is that he's really, he's really developed nicely, and then you have the potential of Luke Reynolds. I don't want to count out Jerry Cross, right? Anything can happen in these winter workouts and spring ball. This is where you get better. But the tight end room, there is a lot of good competition. Guys are going to push each other. And I really don't think if it's whether it's Rapplier out there, whether it's Dinkins, maybe it's Luke Reynolds coming in as that five star potential and, and getting some getting some snaps right out of the gate. Tyler Warren being there as the face of the tight end group is a good start. Him leaving would have been a bad case scenario. And then not to say that Khalil Dinkins and Andrew Rapplier couldn't do it. But now there's a little bit of a buffer, and then you can still have those guys continue to develop, whereas Warren is ready to go right here, right now. I still want to see some more out of Khalil Dinkins. What does he do with more of a workload when he's not the third tight end and everybody else is distracted by a Theo Johnson or a Tyler Warren? What does Dinkins do when he's one of the main guys blocking or in the passing attack? That's what's going to be interesting. And like I said, the potential of Rapplier and Reynolds, where do they push the depth chart? Uh, eager to see, and then you get another offensive weapon for the Peach Bowl because you're going to need it. Ole Miss all, did not have many opt-outs. I think they had one or two. We're going to discuss and preview more of the Peach Bowl, of course, as it is game week. It is game week. The game Peach Bowl is finally here December 30th. Penn State, all but one opt-out confirmed to this point. It is good that they're getting worn back, especially for this game, because I think Penn State's going to need every asset it can have on the offensive end, especially with what Ole Miss and Lane Kiffin's team can provide with Jackson Dart, Quinshawn Judkins, Trey Harris, and so much more. But we're going to discuss it, break it down, all right here on Locked On Nittany Lines, do another cro Locked On crossover. That's on the way with Locked On Ole Miss to talk about the game, preview it, get the official predictions from both of us, Penn State. 
Ole Miss, Saturday, December 30th. We'll talk about it, break it all down right here on Locked On Nittany Lions.